And welcome to Star Trek Discovery Pod, a sometimes funny, trying to be smart when we can podcast covering all things new and classic Trek. Um, I am the mistress of the Winter Constellations, your Captain Mariah Gossett. With me on the view screen, we have... I'm Clyde Haynes. Who needs a rock star? I want a party like an Orion. Mm. And I am DePaul. <laughs> 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 what was the dad's name that cracked uh, me up then. it's like uh I, I don't know like it was like bart or bert but like it was bart. like de bart uh, it wasn't no, it was just it, bart it was it, like no, this is bart. no no this it, is it, my think, mom and this is like bart it, i think is it starts with a p like you know like like i think males start with a p like pubert or I, I don't know it was something like that it, it was it, funny it, it made me yeah. chuckle um, tonight we are talking about the fourth episode of season four of Lower Decks, Something Borrowed, Something Green, uh, which was directed by Bob Suarez, written by Grace Para Um, But first, just a couple of reminders before we continue to dig in on our Orion Love Fest. Um, Paul, where can people like share this podcast? Well, uh, people can share this podcast uh, on places like Apple, Spotify or YouTube. All links are at Star Trek Pod.co. And if you love our content, and we hope that you do, please consider joining our Patreon for just $2 an episode at patreon.com slash Star Trek pod. In uh, pod, uh, Clyde, uh, how can people interact with us tonight if they're watching us live? Write us a letter. You know what those things are. No. Uh, Stick it tonight, in the mail. Get a stamp. Get a stamp. And you have to have the right postage if you don't have a forever mm-hmm. stamp is important it's true. and for for our listeners overseas i don't know what to tell you you know it might be cheaper just to make a phone call um here's what you do if you are listening to us live on the pod what do you do uh, Clyde? what do they do what, what do they do this is what they this do is what, what, what do they do <laughs> this is it right what, what do they do <laughs> they type a capital p then a capital o then a cap no seriously capital p capital o capital d capital pod in the chat and we will see your chat um, and then if you have a thought and you're not part of our Patreons and you didn't put it in the message from the ma- menagerie, then you can type capital H, capital F, capital HF, and we will take a look at your thoughts about the overall episode, episode four. Yes, in- we will. Indeed. Okay. I think it is time for us to get into some... It's time for some hot breaks. Um, We're going to start with our messages from the Menagerie, um, which if you don't know, if you're a part of our Patreon, you get to let us know what you thought about the episode so that even if you can't join us live during the live stream, you can still uh, let us know what you thought about this episode. Uh, So from Carmen, we have hot break. This was a fun episode where we get to learn more about Tendi's background and further character development of Talyn, who is a great addition to the Lower Decks team. The Brotherford roommate situation was a good side plot. I really want to know who the big bad is in the mystery ship. Indeed. Uh, Karen says, this was super fun. Triple threat girls trip. No wonder Tendi was so good against those Romulans and Veritas. Hopefully this is right up there as one of my faves. Oh, honestly, this is right up there as one of my faves. But above all, the chemistry between Tendi, Mariner, and Talyn was what raised this. Too many bots to comment on, except one note is that this was the first ship that was attacked, not with that ship laying in wait, but because they went after it. This is also the first time one of the ships was mentioned by our crew, so Starfleet is starting to worry. Uh, Keen says, Hot Freak, I would have lived, I could have lived without the Rutherford Boimler plot to see more of Tendi Mariner and Talyn in action. We learned more about Orion culture in this episode than nearly 60 years of Star Trek. Correct. Um, I loved it. And then Home Chicky says, Crazy Theory, Big Bad Mystery Ship is Peanut Hamper. Boom. Everyone's, everyone, let's get on it. Pew, 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 pew. pew Peanut pew, Hamper pew, time. Pew. Yes. All great hot freaks messages from our menagerie. We appreciate y'all. Um, Paul, what was your hot freak of this episode? My hot freak. I thought this is probably my favorite episode of the season by far. Like, you know, the, the, the Voyager one was great and stuff like that. But this is like, this did not rely on any uh, any stuff aside from like, you know, like just the, the scant amount of Orion info that we have. 
So I th- like I we got a lot of new stuff, but like it still you know still felt very lower decks. Uh, you know, some people might not have loved the the Boimler uh, and uh, the what 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 was it? No, it was not Boimler. It's uh, Brotherford. 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 Duh, duh. You know, Brotherford. But like, I don't know. Every time you know, deep cut with like the Mark Twain bit. Yeah, and they were just talking <laughs> so funny, like, "Oh, I am but a crumb <laughs> on the biscuit of your intellect, or whatever, something, something like that." <laughs> okay, I think Pretty by the end one. of this, we all have to give our best Mark Twain uh, phraseology. I think mine would be, "That dog don't hunt." <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. That was a good one. Um, uh, man, Clive, there were just so many. Uh, I really did enjoy this episode quite a bit. Um, one of the better episodes all around. Just, I think we, you know, we often on this pod talk about things that we wish, right? We want to know more. We always talk about backstory. You know, we love the backstory. We love character development. And for, and there are two characters that we've been asking for more backstory for a while. That being Tendi and Talyn. And we got it in one episode. And so this this girl's trip, I mean, it was great. It was absolutely great. And I love uh, Kering's comment. We really did learn more about the Orion culture than in 60 years of Trek. I mean, we got a little bit more with Discovery and the Syndicate, but like we've they've that's really like taken future Orions, you know. That's future. Like, but mm-hmm. Like Lower Decks has has really jumped into that and been able to expand it as part of the canon more than any other series has. And it's it's pretty interesting. Like it just it was funny, it was informative. Um, definitely one of my favorite episodes. So uh, I thought that was great. The Mark Twain bit was was absolutely hilarious. Um yeah. and you know, the 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 it, one of my favorite moments was when Mariner was commenting about how captains could get um, swindled <laughs> swindled by three Orion uh, dancers. And I was like, shout out to uh, a little Enterprise. Like, mm-hmm. nice your favorite, to the Enterprise your favorite series now. now. I won't go that far, but I could appreciate bringing Enterprise into it. I will say that I don't think that's done enough. And yeah. so, but they've like been the, doing more this season. They've some nods some to Archer, Enterprise some nods yeah. to the... To the to the uh, X seventy one, but yeah, yeah. Good, 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 I, good, uh, good just to bounce off that though, Clyde, like that episode that they're referring to, you have like three uh, Orion girls dancing. That choreography is hot. <laughs> I'm serious, it is hot. I'm going. They, I was watching, yeah. and I was going, "Damn, this is good." Oh my god, and, and and you completely understood why all the men were like, "Oh my god." <laughs> I mean, I can agree with it being hot. I'm just not sure I'm agreeing that the it you referring to was the choreography because I can't remember the choreography. Oh man, you go, you, everyone should go watch it again. And next week, oh, you tell me, like, you know, Paul oh, was telling me to go watch that particular episode again. Okay. That, that I feel like for a Patreon <laughs> video, we should all learn the choreography and do the oh, TikTok dance. Oh, like, that, do it as like a TikTok dance. Oh, that, oh, like, wow. seriously, it is, it's a, it's very, I don't know. There's some arms things that I don't know that I could I, do. I have full confidence in you, Clyde. <laughs> like, like, I, 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 have you seen have you seen Mariah? Like, it's it, been a it, really long time, so I don't remember. Like, but. It was, like I, I haven't seen it in like it, it's burnt in my brain. <laughs> You're just like, like, I seen it in, core in years. memory engaged. I, I, I remember I go like, oh, you know, like Enterprise stepping up. <laughs> they really they hired the good choreography team. Yeah. No, um, that to me felt I don't know about stepping up. That felt to me like that was right in line with Enterprise and the short shirts and the sonic steam things <laughs> like enterprise was was stepping something up i don't know if it was always the choreography i don't know no, anyway no. anyway that's just my hot freak i'm sorry mariah I'm, I'm stepping on your freak okay mine i'll keep it short um twin twins <laughs> twin twins. <laughs> twin twins. We, my spouse and i literally rewound it back and let that run again because it like really tickled us in the correct way um, it was so funny. Um, I also really like uh, the line. This is the most about your backstory we've ever heard that Mariner says. Oh, Tendi. It's like, it's, I appreciate when the show comments on itself. Like, <laughs> oh, 100%. 100%. 
I just think it's I, I agreed with both of y'all. This is probably one of my favorites of the entire season thus far. I love when we get backstory episodes. I love when we go to different planets. Um, and I think it's some of the smartest writing we've seen. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, season because Facts. it's also it, in in Trek lore, it's correcting so much that was done that was like harmful. I think in the way that by the end of this episode, I was like, you know, it, so often these kind of like sexist tropes have been placed on Orion women, and by the end of this, you're like. Oh, this is like a true matriarch society. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like they have systems in place to use their their matriarchal status as powers. And I'm like, I was full into it. I was like, this is dope. I'm so, really so, excited so, about it. So what I'm hearing, Mariah, is like mm -hmm. you feel and this is I'm not I'm not trying I'm trying to like uh -huh. take the words, <laughs> but it, it feels like you're saying that like uh abuse of power is fine if it's done by women great i'm, I'm totally fine with it I'm, 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 I'm on board i'm on board it, but but you know that's what it sounds like you're saying I, I i feel like what i'm actually saying is that <laughs> they still have abuses of power but it's not sexist which feels uh, slightly better <laughs> it's, it's, there you go it's kind of like That's they right. they they were on one extreme and the yeah. balance set out they went to another yes. and that feels that feels healthy. It feels yeah. like a society that has found its own priorities and it's a culture that I want to learn more about. Um, Interesting enough, it didn't seem oppressive, which I yeah. thought was, was because they're drugs. I mean, there seems, I mean, we also <laughs> only saw everything from like a high class family from, point from of view, but crazy rich Orion's point of view. That's what yeah. that's crazy, <laughs> What's crazy rich, rich Orion's? Orion's? Oh my God. Oh. But, but, like, oh, it was just like man. watching this. It, I did have this, it did occur to me that like, you know, that a lot of Star Trek, you know, you can like map their, you know, their species onto like, like the seven deadly sins kind of thing mm -hmm. where like, you know, Frangies are greedy, like, uh, you know, Klingons are violent, you know, uh, Romulans and Vulcans are prideful and like we don't really have a sexy one like a, a lustful one except perhaps the Orions mm -hmm. I mean I, I don't I can't think of one so like yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting when I when I, I go like oh they're really leaning into this like you know the, the this like this the sex forward society <laughs> Uh, I gotta say, Chupi's right. Chupi says that it's kind of a stabby culture, though. Yeah, they're very into <laughs> I mean, that gag, the running gag with Mary oh getting stabbed in the same place, hysterical. And, and what was so great about it, character wise, for the for a series, is that like normally Mariner is the alpha, but she is mm -hmm. totally, you know, the person who mm -hmm. gets beat up like <laughs> she's like willing to take the hit so that tendy can like be her most tendy self i did yeah. think this was interesting uh nicole says sexy would be riza <laughs> yeah oh right right this our sex mm, mm -hmm. indeed indeed the only but, thing uh, that the stabbing um mariner joke missed for me it was and i had it in my head so i didn't need it was I just needed somebody to keep popping out and going, they stab Mariner, like, every time. She oh, I, love I, I love it. I like, love it. And that would have happened to me. That was excellent. Um, how would you all think you'd fare in the murder bug game? Not very well. well. What do you mean? You were just saying how, like, you know, like, drugs don't affect you, Clyde. Like, you would you'd be so good. You'd be just, you'd, you'd just be, you just drink, 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 and then your liver would explode, but not before the bug <laughs> bit you. I think you'd be fine. I don't know. I mean, that was a that was a crazy the, game. Yeah, the nightclub scene was like one of the moments when they walked in that I was like, man, this is one of the times I kind of wish this was a live action show because I'm sure the production design would have been. I mean, the animation was beautiful. I also have to say the animation in the first opening scene with the ships also looked mm -hmm. great. Yeah, no, um, yeah. really, really great. But it was just one of those times that I'm like, man, this would like these costumes and this like set would just look so cool. <laughs> yeah, totes, totes. Um, I, I was really, really into it. Um, I also liked seeing the the gal gang out of their uniforms. I thought that was like a fun change of pace. Because you like midriffs. Yeah, I'm into some midriff action. I like a crop top. Hey, there's you nothing know? wrong with some midriff. Nothing wrong. Not I mean, 90s style is fully back in swing. I walked yeah, into right. a Target the other day and it felt like I was walking into a Delia's catalog. So um, <laughs> it's all back in now. <laughs> Um, I thought the pheromone den was really wild and fun. Uh, again, I was like the production design would have been amazing, but that was a fun, uh, guest star moment too. It was, um, uh, uh, Kamiko Glenn from Orange is the New Black played Madam G. Okay. Um, 
who I thought was a fun addition. And then Ariel Winter was the voice of uh, Erica, the sister. Okay. So, oh. so that's a uh, modern, family, modern right? family. Yeah, from mm-hmm. Ma- Modern Family. Um, Chupi just asked Pod, I love having Mariner and Talyn as kind of the Greek chorus for Tendi. Yeah, that's a good observation. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah. And, and definitely playing those two sides of like Mariner definitely egging on Tendi versus like Talyn making all of these like accurate assumptions and notes and L- <laughs> Tendi like, having to be like, no, please. <laughs> subtly like, you know, like, uh, like undercutting, like, oh, Orion's like, you know, have vast wealth and like, you know, uh, and don't and talk downplay, about it. Yeah, downplay, yeah, while, downplay. While, while showing, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, did y'all have any uh, suspicions that uh, Tendi came from a vast amount of wealth? Oh yeah, hundred percent. What were I, the signs for you? Like it was last season when, like, we uh, or was it the season before when they had to go get uh, Taana's like uh, what you call it? Uh, oh, the box thing. The box, yeah. <laughs> like you know, uh, like like people knew who she was. Mm-hmm. So yeah, because we did last season. That's when we first heard the. Um, uh mistress of winter constellations so yeah so i i I remember like you could tell that they at least for for my my guess like they had an idea that oh let's make her someone famous i don't know if they knew that they're gonna make her like a prime master assassin on the Mm -hmm. fifth largest family we're barely the fifth largest syndicate family (laughs) (laughs) you know it's interesting because i'm starting to see a pattern here with the cerritos right like this like the crew of the Cerritos has this habit of being well off and like somewhat royalty. When you look at what's the, uh, the engineer whose name like, I can't remember. Oh, Billups. 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 Yeah. Billups is like the prince. No, he, mm-hmm. He's the heir. He's the, the heir. heir. Like, right. And then okay. you've got Boimler who is like, you know, the heir to the raisin. <laughs> the raisin yeah. vineyard. <laughs> the it, raisin it, it, vineyard. It, it's literally the most privileged trust fund ship in 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 starfleet right which is an interesting thing to think about right i mean even mariners both of her her parents are cats it's a ship full of nepo babies i know ship of nepo babies and and rutherford that's it remember (laughs) rutherford's the only person who's like you know like i come from humble origins you know yeah i mean it's interesting because like uh, you know tendy is like pushing you know she's the rebel of the group it's like i'm not going into the family business i'm going to go do this thing that you know i'm going to be a scientist i'm going to become this noble person and like don't judge me for the the choices of my family and kind of vibe and it is interesting to think about them all being little little nepo right. babies <laughs> but, but she ends up on a ship filled with people who said the same thing mm-hmm. right they all said i'm not going into the family business i'm not even mariner i'm not doing it that way you can't yeah. make me they're all it's like a it's nepo rebels is what it is Just well now nepo i like rebels. them less thank you guys well thank you for ruining it for me well <laughs> oh, done no. well done our poor crew um let me, I, how did y'all, or what did y'all think of Talyn in this episode as kind of our straight um, person of the group? I think it worked out. I think it worked out great. I, I love it. I feel like from the moment we were introduced with Talyn um, as an interesting character, this is what I've been like waiting for. And I think sometimes the, the tricky part is you've got this, this strong four foursome with mm-hmm. Rutherford and Tendi and Mariner and Boimler. And then you've got this kind of, be ensemble with the senior officers for someone like Talyn to come in and here we are in season four and to kind of be introduced. It's, it's tricky to break in when you've got all those characters around. So here we have an episode where it's really focused on the three of them and she has space to shine. And I thought she really shined. Like it Mm -hmm. was, it it was just the great kind of, you've got the comedian, you've got the straight man, and then you, you've got this, you know, the centerpiece, and, you know, we talked about the Greek chorus. I thought um, as an ensemble, it really, really worked and got, and, and especially at the end when she was like, Oh, it looks like my, uh, my notepad has, has malfunctioned and she threw it away. I was like, now she's part of the crew. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This definitely felt like the episode between her kind of connections with Boimler and then her connecting uh, with Mariner and uh, Tendi this episode. It's been nice to see them kind of do this in a piecemeal instead of being like, oh, we need the whole group to yeah, then approve sure. of her as being part of the group. Sure. Um, I also like that she brings this 
sort of questioning of the Federation a little bit, right? Like she's only really there because she's trying to earn her way back to the, the Vulcan science um, programming. And so I, I find her to be interesting in that constant like questioning, but in a different way than Mariner, right? Like Mariner's always pushing up against the bureaucracy and the, um, the leadership that is asked of her versus like to Lynn's kind of like, Oh, I mean, the Federation's okay, I guess, you know, <laughs> like there's ways that we could be doing this better. Um, so I I've been enjoying her, her character as well. Um, what did y'all think of our kind of B plot with Boimler and Rutherford playing on the holodeck? I, I thought that the holodeck was, you know, I, I think it was specific. It was one joke. It just hit the joke. Well, like, mm-hmm. you know, I, like when they were doing the bonsai tree, I like, I didn't really care about that. Right. And, and so like, uh, and whenever, you know, anything that was in the holodeck with them playing Twain was like, ah, oh, this is throwaway. I don't, mm-hmm. it doesn't really push uh, their narrative at all. I don't learn anything about them. It's just a throwaway, but the Twain in this is just so funny. So funny. I, yeah. yeah. It truly, I gotta agree with Paul. <laughs> It made me giggle. It was like, I know we needed a B plot and I appreciated that this B plot because it wasn't substantive gave room. And I think the room I liked, I liked having so much room for the A plot with um, being on Orion. Mm -hmm. And I thought they did a good job of just like really hammering jokes in the B plot. They were like, Oh, like you're going to get to see a bunch of stuff and it's going to be fun and funny, but also like, you know, a big character arc moment for Tendi. So instead of trying to build another character arc, we're just going to make you laugh. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, th- I thought it was great. I thought it was great. Like, I, I did miss the fact that their room wasn't like slightly red because mm. of the Nacelle. Like, the, I, I, I think that was like, you know, just a, if it was just a little bit red throughout the whole, I think that might have made it like an extra j- layer of joke. But, you know, I, I uh, oh, go ahead. I, I'll say I thought it was brilliantly written. Um, so kudos to, to the writers because to your point, Mariah, um, when it first started out, I was really worried. I was like, oh, this whole, like, I was thinking like, what are we going to see? Are they going to get into a fight because they're hiding that they don't really like each other? And like, what is this about? And, you know, they start fighting over this bonsai tree and I'm like, are we serious? Like, all right, can we get back to the A plot? But it was all set up for that Twain joke. And when it first started out, like, first of all, I don't know what it's like if you've never watched Star Trek, right? Like, if this is, like, if you're just, and let me rephrase that, if you just started watching since Discovery, I don't know what that scene was like for you, but the minute that they came in as as Twain, (laughs) that was a deep cut and throwback, and I, I felt myself sitting up because I was like, oh, man, like, one of the weirdest and funniest things Trek has ever done is brought Mark Twain into yeah. the holodeck. Like, <laughs> and they're going to lean in. And then it was joke after joke. And, and, like, oh it, and again, like you mentioned earlier, Mariah, they're almost laughing at themselves and they're oh. doing it in a way that honestly, it was funnier and better than the original. And so I just, I, like, I was like, I'm here for this. And then when they left the holodeck i was a little disappointed and then they came back and it didn't just i was like they really could have spent the entire episode on the holodeck in twin twains and i would have been okay i the amount of money though that i would pay to watch don lewis doing her mark twain impression for that voiceover session Mm -hmm. like i it, it truly it gave me so much joy also just like i feel like i could hear them like laughing between having to do some of the takes of this dialogue. <laughs> like, sure. um, I I really enjoyed it. Um, so, the, so real quick, I have yes. a, I have a guest staying with me right now, mm-hmm. and so I go like, oh, shoot, I need to watch the episode again. So I'm watching it with her, and then like I, I was very cognizant, like, oh, I have a holodeck thing, and she's not a Star Trek person. And then we cut to like a a, a wide shot of a steamboat. Yeah. And, I, and I'm going like, <laughs> which why do we need an establishing shot of a holodeck? <laughs> and, 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 and I was going like, oh man, this is going to make no sense to her whatsoever. This, it's like it, this is purely for me, you know, like uh, in this regard. So I thought it was great. Um, I hope she got a chuckle out of it. Um, the Chalnoth, um, as Mark Twain, also very funny. The line that was a southern that was, accent. That's, that's right. 
best that was one of the best lines not only was it said now he said i am from the south of somewhere that is a southern accent yeah i was like hat tip sir hat tip (laughs) truly um which is from the that uh particular species is from a tng episode the alliance if you want to go back and watch it um they apparently did not believe in government so society existed in a state of total anarchy where only the strong survived so i thought that was fun they kind of played off of like i need to feel very powerful in order to give you what you want um yeah that's a really deep cut episode because it's not the best episode yeah Mm -hmm. Um, I did though, like, I feel like both story plots kind of come around to this, um, you know, with, I I thought the Tendi and Erica, um, battle scene was also really fun. I thought there's some cool, um, animation pieces there. I enjoyed the pacing of the fight as well as the, um, kind of emotional arc that they, they set through it. Um, and eventually they just come to the point like, oh, everyone just needs to talk about their feelings in a real and like truthful way. And then you can find a solution, um, which was the nice little bow on both plot points of this episode. There you go. We all, we, we, it it, it all, it all, you know, (laughs) message, (laughs) the rainbow comes across screen. Mm -hmm. Um, Also the uh, ship that they stole at the end, the Tendi hot wire ship is a Raven class, uh, which is the same one used by seven's parents in Star Trek Voyager. I was trying to figure out where that ship was from. Cause when Mm -hmm. I saw it, I was like, I I, immediately it came up and I was like, okay, that's the TNG like console screen in the background. Like I was like, okay, so where's this ship from? Um, And I just could not place it. So nice work, Mariah. Um, I also, I wanted to kind of come back to, since this is our big Tendi episode, how do you think this information now frames how you will think of Tendi going forward? If it changes it at all. Well, I, I, let me ask you this. Like, uh, who, who was I talking to? I was talking to someone. I was talking to, uh, I was talking to my friend, Julie, and we're talking, we're talking about something, something. And she goes, well, Paul. What if I told you that all this time I'm like actually an heiress? I'm like a billionaire. Mm. And, and like, how would that change our relationship? And I go, well, how about we do this? Let's say all this time you had cancer. And then all of a sudden, 15 years later, I go, oh, by the way, Julie, I have the cure for cancer. <laughs> 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 and I go like, how does it affect me? It doesn't affect me at all. But like, uh, and it probably wouldn't affect any of them because they they apparently come from a post scarcity like you know society. Yeah, that line from Mariner was funny. Yeah. But but I am not from a post scarcity. <laughs> yeah. So the knowledge that Tendi comes from like a, a huge like a Billups style castle family. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think that'd be like you know I think she'd be paying for dinner more often. I mean, I, I would definitely know where I'm doing shore leave. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, it would be like, hey, where are you guys going? To Tendi's house? Where else? Like, where there's the oil baths? <laughs> I'm telling right, you, like, right. I didn't get my oil bath. We're going to hang out at Tendi's place. Um, I, You know, I think how it changes the way I look at Tendi is, you know, when I think about this, when I think about these ensembles, you know, we mm-hmm. it was four, now it's kind of five with Talen. I always try and place it in terms of, like, the A-team team up. Mm -hmm. and one of the things that this team like mariner's always been like the leader and kind of the tough person a bit now tindy's actually the muscle Mm -hmm. and so especially now that they're like lieutenant jg's i'm expecting like if they get into trouble tindy's the one who's like gonna pull up you want tindy with you yeah yeah well here's here's uh a thought that i had like you know and I love watching Mariner. I love Boimler. I love Rutherford. I love Tendi. And I, I like Talyn, and she'll probably grow on me. To watch. But ever to have to hang out with any of them, I don't know if I would like to hang out with Mariner. I actually don't know if I'd like to hang out with Boimler or Rutherford. But I'd probably want to hang out with Tendi from the very beginning. Because she's just enthusiastic and happy. And in my life, I need that. You know, I, I I don't need someone reckless. And I don't need mm-hmm. someone necessarily neurotic or someone who's just so into, you know, uh, so that's just for me. So, like, it, mm-hmm. it doesn't really affect how I see Tendi because Tendi, for all of it, has always been my favorite. 
guest. I, I don't I don't know that I'm saying my favorite. I mean, but I agree the fact that Tindy would be awesome to hang out with. It's hard for me to say I wouldn't want to hang out with Mariner because uh I would do anything to hang out with Tawny Newsom. So <laughs> except miss a wedding, apparently. Um <laughs> So that's a little hard, but I do think hanging out with Tindy, Tindy seems the most, I don't want to say normal, but balanced in terms of like, she, she's smart, but inquisitive. She's mm-hmm. fun. She's got so much depth. She's definitely three dimensional. It would be tough for me to hang out with Boims. He's just, it, he'd be tough. I do think it's interesting, though, like the I, I really felt the point of this episode about how we hadn't really learned that much about her backstory. And it's kind of like that friend who is a good friend and like is there for you and asks you a ton of questions about yourself and like you go do fun things with. But then you still like there's so much of their life that remains like a mystery, like Tendi's not the oversharer. And I think it was like partially based in some some shame over like how people tend to think about the Orions and how, you know, her family falls into some of the the tropes that I think she was scared of people thinking about her. Right. You know, that's a really interesting thought, Mariah. And I think it's um, it also shows something else that for the most part, our our fearsome foursome now fivesome. They talk a lot and a lot about themselves and they don't listen that well. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. I, would I mean, I'm just calling group. out that like they're, they're, they're always so focused on, you know, especially Mariner and Boimler. They're always so focused on their plot. Like what's sure. going they on. They have the answers. They have the answers. Mm-hmm. Right. And even Rutherford is always running around and kind of frenetic, but you're right. They're like friends and they're close, but it's like, they, they almost have to look up and go, huh, you ne-, like, I almost want them to go, you never told me you had a sister. And mm-hmm. I want Tindy to go, and you never asked. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. you never asked me if I had a sister. You never Clyde, asked do you have a sister? Parents. Uh, it's a long story. Technically, I have like five. Great. I did not know that. I feel like I've ever, <laughs> Mariah, do you come from a vineyard? Uh, sort of, actually. <laughs> oh, see, there we go. That now, now, Star Trek is making us better friends. There you go. There we go. <laughs> the more you know. The, um, <laughs> I just need that graphic on standby at all times. Yeah. Um, any theories of our new, the big bad ship that seems to be? There's uh, been some theories. Do you think it's? people are being transported and ships are being destroyed or do you think it is full death and destruction like i i like i thought it could be a great other it could be anything until mm-hmm. this last episode where you just see the orion go ah! yeah yeah there's and then they're dissolved <laughs> like it's pretty harsh like <laughs> yeah. uh so uh but i have a, a theory on who mm. or, or like not, not who but like connection okay and it's in it's in the credits and you know and tracks is you know the whale the star trek yeah. 4 right because star trek 4 is basically like the same mo like oh mm-hmm. nothing happens and all of a sudden all your power goes down yeah so some something related to star trek 4 seems to be where i would go towards right now yeah i'm like what is the lower deck version of like the whales need to be saved like what mm-hmm. would be the species of animal that has come to ask the cerritos for help I hope it's not the packlets. What if, what if, like, if that is like a lower decks whale? Yeah. A dolphin? Well, well I'm just saying, like, so, so they come from the whale ship, but they're the lower decks and they're just like, you know. <laughs> oh, it uh, is a lower decks whale ship. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Cerritos of whale ships. <laughs> uh, Nicole's got a theory. Nicole says, I wonder if the ship from the beginning is gathering up species for menagerie. We never see bodies in the wreckage. Mm. No. Um, but Chupi says uh, that we did hear screams for the first time, which kind of sinks my they were transported away. Yeah, because I'm like, maybe there's no bodies because they're just being fully incinerated is like the the vibe. Well, but yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I don't know. Like, the, I, I guess to answer your question, Mariah, what I'm trying to figure out is mm-hmm. what's the theme and the tone of Lower Decks and has it changed? Right. I mean, we've had death, but usually with resurrection, right? Right. So that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, 
you know, if this is if this was Rick and Morty, right? Mm-hmm. Then they're dead. Yeah. Like right. Like, like uh, not. But not if the... this was the animated series, they're not. My, my statement is like we've seen people die. We we see like in in season one, like the first, you know, the the, the season finale, a whole ship gets that's true gets killed by the backlift, and it was. And we no had hit. a lot of destruction last season with those Texas ships. Yeah. So yes. like, like so so you know we might like you know like uh, Bonamigo. He, 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 ah! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So like so people die like and it's okay that they die I, I well you know because they're cartoons they're not real blah blah, blah. but anyway but like you know like they were real to me Paul they were real, real to me, me. <laughs> that's right um anyway but but my my yeah. uh my statement is like it, it it's I don't think we have enough information quite yet yeah you know so. Yeah, we'll we'll see how it continues. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this episode. I hope we get some more like uh, maybe a Rutherford or a Talyn backstory episode this season. I would very much enjoy that. Um, but any other thoughts on this particular episode, y'all? It's a good episode. I enjoyed it. It's yeah. a good episode. Like you know, yeah, I I I, I always like the look of Orion ships mm-hmm. that aren't like you know that that was like a like a pirate ship as opposed to just a, 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 a what you call it a, a shuttle kind of thing mm-hmm. so, but you know but yeah I, I i think maybe if i shave my head and have a couple of bolts would you guys think that would look cool look cool i don't know the chain tattoo could also be pretty cool i was thinking you gotta about earn that, that though you gotta earn yes. that um if uh, according to trek movie the orion ship that's attacked by the mystery ship is a similar design to the 22nd century orion interceptor from enterprise mm-hmm mm. So well, more maybe it's a time travel thing. Maybe because mm. no, we've yeah. had so many Enterprise references, that could be interesting. I know. Like, the, 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 do we do time travel in Star Trek? It's just no, a little bit. Not usually. <laughs> Sometimes on the occasion. <laughs> yeah. I guess we did already do a time travel episode in Strange New Worlds with Lower Decks characters. So I don't yeah. know if they'll do it again. But yeah, yeah. I mean, bad. it's Star Trek. They could do a time timey wimey episode every three episodes and we barely notice yeah that something was different (laughs) that is also true um but yes i really enjoyed this i'm excited for more lower decks next week we will be back to talk about the fifth episode you can subscribe rate and review the podcast uh go ahead and give us like five stars if you're feeling the show on apple or on spotify you can visit star trek pod.co for links to everywhere you can find the podcast or the video if you are listening and you're like oh i'd like to check out the video podcast you can find links there too as well as to our patreon um clyde where can people find us on the interwebs at star trek pod in Indeed. Thank you, Karen, for helping us run the Twitter account or the X account, whatever it's called, until we have to pay for it. And then we will be gone. Um, <laughs> thank you all so much for joining us. We will see you next time. Uh, everyone check out that uh, the the dancing episode, like, you know, in oh, yeah. Enterprise. And let me know what you think. Like, If it was like thumbs up or thumbs down, you know. Let us know. Let us know. We will. Don't watch it with your kids. Don't. <laughs> that's, a, that's a solo viewing time for you. <laughs> All right, that's enough. Live long and prosper. Bye-bye, y'all. Bye-bye, everyone.